Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Bobby and we're back with another camera review and I'm just gonna say it right now. This could be the full frame camera of the year for 2019. We're here to talk about the Panasonic S1R, but we're not just here to talk about the camera. We're also gonna talk about the L-Mount Alliance and I actually have with me today examples from Leica and with Sigma. This is going to be a pretty long review, but if you just want the Cliff Notes version of it, I'll just tell you right now, this camera is an amazing camera, not without its faults, but a camera you should be looking for if you want optimal image quality and fantastic glass. Okay, but before I go any further, I do wanna thank Cathay Photo. Cathay Photo helped make this review possible. They have been a staple in photography and videography in Singapore for over 60 years. So anything you guys need, hit them up. Cathay Photo, we'll put a link in our description below. And I also wanna thank Leica Singapore and Sigma Singapore for being part of this review as well, because without their support and having these lenses with us, we couldn't give you examples of how the L-Mount Alliance works with the S1R. So without further ado, let's talk about the camera. Now, unfortunately, the weather isn't the best for us today. As you can see, it's quite drizzling and you can see it on my shirt, but uh, this camera is weather sealed and so is the lenses, so we have no issues with that, which leads me into the build quality and the design of the S1 and S1R. Now, you can see that Panasonic took a lot of time and research into designing this S series. Yeah, it has some similarities to the G9, but they've also have some influence from the Leica SL. You can see that in this. First off, the grip feels fantastic in this. It feels very robust. Magnesium alloy body, weather sealed as I mentioned before. And the buttons are really just in the right place. In terms of weight, this is not a light camera. Body, battery, and card weighs over one kilo. And you're going, well, that's not including the lens? No, it's not including the lens. Um, you can think, wow, is that really, that must be really heavy and really kind of cum cumbersome to carry. It's not. Because of the weight distribution in the body and everything else, it feels really good. It feels very much like a DSLR for the most part. So if you're used to shooting with, let's say, like a, a larger size Canon or a Nikon, you're gonna feel at home with this Panasonic S1R. Um, of course, you can get an external battery pack that gets to the bottom of this and you can get that 1DX look or that professional, let's say, Nikon D5 look to it, which will give you better grip, but for the most part, you're good to go. Now, before I talk about the S1R, I do wanna talk about just a little bit of the differences between the S1 and S1R. The S1 is meant as more of a hybrid between videographers and photographers, the best of both worlds. The S1R is more geared towards photography, and you're gonna see that in some of the specs that are in this camera, as well as the megapixels. Speaking of which, 47.3 MOS sensor on this, full-frame sensor, and also has anti-reflective coating and low-pass filter to this for maximum resolution, and you can really tell by the images that this produces. Is this the same sensor as the Leica Q2? Because you're thinking, hey, wait a second, 47.3, 47.3. I've asked, I don't have an answer, but my guess is, because of the relationship with Leica and Panasonic, perhaps yes but don't quote me on that. Also inside of this, we have the new Venus image processor, which does some amazing things in terms of ISO performance as well. ISO goes from 100 up to 25,600. That's on the hard ISO. If you want to do the expanded ISO, 50 to 51,200. But I will tell you this, ISO performance on this is really, really good. At 25,600, I can get usable images. This might be one of the better full frame cameras for low light that I have tested thus far. Also in terms of 4K video now, you got 4K 60 frames per second inside of this. Now, there is an update coming for the S1 that will give you L-Log at 10-bit 422. That update will not come to the S1R, it's just as it is. But you got 1080p video, you got 4K video, you are pretty much set on the video and you got image stabilization as well. Speaking of which, five axis image stabilization to the sensor, and then paired with optical image stabilization in two out of the three Panasonic lenses, you have six stops of correction in this camera system. So you are good to go on that regard. But one of my favorite features is the EVF. 5.76 million dot EVF on this with 120 hertz refresh rate. That's like looking through a window pretty much. It's beautiful. It just makes shooting so much easier, so much simpler. If you wanna nail that focus in, especially on, let's say, a very, very a small object or just something you just wanna nail, let's say, that hair on somebody's head, you can do it with this a lot easier than with other cameras. 
also on the back of it, 3.2 inch touchscreen LCD display, which swivels, not fully swivelable. It doesn't swivel to the front if you wanna do vlogging or videography, but you can articulate it quite a bit like the Fujifilm cameras. That's a 2.1 million dot screen on this. So it's pretty clear, very vibrant in terms of colors, but if you wanna see absolute detail, I recommend taking the images out of the camera, putting them to your computer, because the screen, as good as it is, doesn't hold up to the resolution that this camera can produce. Now, in terms of battery life, the battery life is pretty decent on this. You're getting around 380 to 360 shots per charge. For the most part, the way I shoot, I shoot, I turn off the camera, I shoot, I turn off the camera, and I can pretty much go a full day um, getting a lot of great images out of this. So no issues at all with that. Enough about the specs. Let's get down to talking about how it's like to use this camera with a variety of lenses. Now to talk about using this camera, we gotta talk about the lenses because of course they go hand in hand and good lenses can make or break a camera. Panasonic did not disappoint. The partnership with Leica is seen in full force with this collection of lenses. Now, there are three lenses out to date. There's the 24105 macro, which is the kit lens. There's the 7200 F4, which is the S Pro Leica certified lens. And there's the 51.4, Lumix S Pro Leica certified lens that I have on the camera right now. Leica and Panasonic have had a long standing relationship and we've seen it, especially on a lot of the Lumix cameras. They have, they have Leica lenses on there and so forth. And a lot of that DNA that we've seen in some of the SL lenses, I'm finding it in these Lumix Pro lenses. And just for a tip, if you wanna find out if the, light, if the lens is Leica certified or not, if you're not looking at the box, of course, is to see the S. If the S is red, it's like a certified. If it's gray, it's not like a certified. Doesn't mean it's not a good lens. It doesn't have just doesn't have that like a certification to it. Okay, talking about the 51.4. And if you watch this channel, you know I love a good 50. I love prime lenses. First, we got 16 elements, 11 groups, two spherical elements. The diameter for the filter on the front of this lens is 77 meters. Close focusing distance is 70 cm, so it's pretty decent. Weight on this. It's 955 grams, slightly lighter than the Leica version, which we have with us, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Also, the lens is pretty much weather resistant for the most part. I wouldn't go diving with it, of course, but for drizzle, rain, if you're out in different terrain, you're gonna be fine with it. But let's talk about the optical quality. This lens really impressed me. I've shot it, of course, next to the Sumalux SL 51.4, and that lens, I believe is 60% more in terms of price than this lens. But for the average person out there, there's not much of a discernible difference. And that's not knocking Panasonic or Leica. That means the collaboration between these two companies is so good that this Lumix S Pro 51.4 is a phenomenal lens. It's not a cheap lens comparatively to other 50s on the market, but the image quality is great. The sharpness, the bouquet, uh, the separation, the colors. I mean, honestly, you need to get this lens if you get the S1 or the S1R. It's really that good. Now, one thing about this lens that is interesting is that you can actually control the aperture, of course, through the aperture ring here, or you can control it through the front dial here. So if it's in automatic mode, you're good to go. Just move it up and down. Once you go off auto mode, then it's on your own, your own with the ring. But uh, very intuitive, very easy. And this bouquet is stunning, especially when you see the ZVF, because you can see the depth of field right then and there. This is a beautiful lens. It really is that good. Another lens we have with us here today is the Lumex S Pro 7200 F4, like a certified with optical image stabilization inside of it. Now, this lens is weighing in 985 grams, slightly heavier than the 51.4, but for some reason, I don't know why, the 51.4 feels a lot heavier. Maybe it's weight distribution in this lens, but it feels very svelte. And overall, just a svelte lens for a 7200. But let's talk about the internals. 23 elements, 17 groups, one is spherical element. Uh, close focusing distance is 0.92 meters and the filter diameter is once again at 77 millimeters. So this is great. You can go from the 51.4 to the 7200 with the same filter, no problems at all. But what's it like to use? It's great. 
Image quality is fantastic. It's sharp, great color rendition, just like the 51.4, and the optical image stabilization. So now your shots are very, very steady with this. Even in low light, even in situations where you might falter at a slower shutter speed, you're good with this 7200, and it's sharp throughout the focal range. No aberration that I'm finding in this. It's great for portraiture. It's got great depth of field to it. You know, we've even compared it to the Leica 9280 on the SL. And one thing that I noticed on the lenses versus the Leica lenses, in case you're Leica users out there, is that the Lumix lenses tend to be a few millimeters closer to the subject in terms of focal distance. So if the Leica is 50, the Panasonic will be about 52, 53. And the same thing with this. Now we did do a test with this lens compared to the 9280 at 150 millimeter uh, focal distance at f4 and that was the same thing. But in terms of image quality, I think Leica and Panasonic went out to dinner, had a few drinks, and uh, Panasonic, we were able to get some uh, secrets out of them because the image quality of these Panasonic lens are really, really close to Leica quality. Build quality is different, but the image quality, it's there. Moving on to the third of the Panasonic lenses we've got with us is the kit lens. That's right, the 24-105 F4 macro optical image stabilization. This is a Lumix S, it's not a pro because it's not Leica certified and you can tell that is because the S on the lens is gray. If it's red, Leica certified, gray it's not. Doesn't mean the lens is bad, actually this lens is really good for a kit lens. It's extremely good for a kit lens. But let's talk about what's inside of this lens. First off, we got 16 elements, 13 groups. We've got a number of spherical elements, I believe four spherical elements, don't quote me on that. Most focusing distance is about 30 centimeters and it's got about a five times magnification on it. So you're pretty much covered for close up shots, of course in your macro shots as well, no issues at all. Filter diameter is 77 millimeters once again. So the great thing is one filter will cover you in all the lineup out of the Panasonic lenses. And the weight of this lens is the lightest of all three at 680 grams. Colors are rendered well, it's sharp. I don't find any aberration in my images at all. To be fair with you, I've tested this lens a little bit, but it's not been the lens I've shot with the most. From my brief experience on the streets of Haji Lane, an Arab street here in Singapore, it's a pretty solid kit lens. I mean, out of kit lenses in the market, Panasonic's done well. It's been, actually, to be honest with you, all three of their lenses are really, really good. And uh, if you only got, if only can afford one lens, the kit lens isn't that half bad. So talking about another lens I have with me today, I also need to talk about the L-Mount Alliance. Now this is a partnership between Panasonic, Leica, and Sigma. Now this partnership was announced last year. They would all share an L-Mount and also make cameras in the respective fields. So Leica already has the Leica SL with the L-mount lenses, as well as the CL and the TL. Panasonic came out with the S1 and the S1R. Sigma will come out with their own camera in the future. But there will be a lineup of lenses that they can all share amongst each other. So we thought, since we have the S1R and Leica makes an L-mount lens, let's put two and two together. So we want to thank Leica Singapore for allowing that to happen. And I have with me on the S1R the 50SL Sumalux 1.4 is spherical. This is a beautiful lens, to say the least. This is, uh, any Sumalux from Leica is renowned, and in the L-mount lineup, it doesn't disappoint. So let's talk about what's inside this lens. 11 elements, nine groups. Uh, it's a double spherical lens. Close focusing distance is 0 0.60 meters. And the filter size on this lens is 82 millimeters, so it's slightly larger than the Panasonic. And the weight of this bad boy comes in at 1,065 grams over a kilo. That means the lens and the S1R are pretty much the same weight, give or take a few grams. So let's talk about what it's like to use. Oh man, the bouquet, the, the depth of field in it, the colors the detail, the micro contrast. It just, it's on another level. Now having said that though, there is a comparison to make between the 51.4 Lumix S Pro and the Sumalux SL51.4. As I mentioned earlier in this review, that 
if you don't have the funds to afford this lens, the S Pro uh, 50 millimeter a version of that will be just fine for you. There is a difference, but it's not as big as you might think. And that's why I say this partnership between Panasonic and Leica goes just beyond stamping their name on a lens. This L9 Alliance is real, and this 50 Sumalux paired with a 47.3 megapixel sensor, whew, it's a thing of beauty. Okay, so talking about another lens here, we gotta talk about another L-mount alliance partner, and that is Sigma. And Sigma Singapore has been very kind enough to loan me for a few days the MC21 adapter. Now this is the adapter that Sigma's made for Canon EF lenses to work with L-mount cameras. Now this adapter is not on the market yet. This is a pre-production sample. So performance is not finalized. It's still gonna be work in progress. Still updates are gonna happen. But I just wanted to show you what it's like on the S1R and, take it and snap a few photos with it. But again, we're not gonna judge performance. It's pre-production. The first one I have is the 40 F1.4 art lens for the EF mount. When you look at the images with the S1R, especially with a 47.3 megapixel sensor, there's a lot of information, a lot of detail in them. And the colors, for me, I notice this on the Sigma lenses, is they come out a little bit warmer. The skin tones come out a little bit more livelier. So if you like that kind of pop to skin tones in your images, check out this lens, won't disappoint. And now we're down to our last lens to talk about, and this is the Sigma Art 135 F1.8 EF mount with the MC21 adapter on the S1R. Now, as you can tell, the light's coming down here. It's been a long day of reviewing, but we do want to tell you a little bit about this lens and how it performs in the S1R. This is a portraiture lens, and it's one of the best 135s in the market. It is stunning clarity, colors. As we mentioned with the 41.4, it's got that nice warm tone to skins. Same thing with this 135, beautiful bouquet in the background. It's just a really gorgeous lens. Build quality is right up there with the best. Made in Japan through and through. And performance on the S1R is okay. As I mentioned before, this is a pre-production adapter. Things will improve before they come out to market. But even right now, it's pretty decent. And portrait lens, you're not shooting fast. You're setting up, you're taking time for your shot. With the 47.3 megapixel sensor with this lens, Look out. It's been a long day for this review. Now for you, it's only been a few minutes, but for us, it's been a few hours. And we figured we'd end this review by showing you some of the video quality. So right now we're shooting this ending bit with the S1R, with the 50 Sumalux SL 1.4 attached to it. And we're shooting it at 1.4 aperture. So it's wide open right now and you're at 4K 25 frames per second. And we'll put the rest of the stats uh, below the screen. But I gotta tell you, video quality is not too bad with the S1R. Now you're not gonna get the 10-bit 422L log profile that you're gonna get on the S1 that's coming up in a future update. But for novice photographers out there or videographers, this is more than adequate. It's a stunning image, it really is. Anyway. My overall thoughts in the S1R is that it's a really good camera. Now, there are some misses that Panasonic will address in future firmware updates, I was told. First off, in terms of focusing, now there's been a lot of talk about the contrast base versus phase detect and so forth. Day-to-day -day usage with firmware 1.0 that I'm using on this camera, there is no issue, it is quick. Now, with continuous autofocus, sometimes the image will flutter a little bit, but with single autofocus, no problem at all. Now, this camera has the ability to do face detect, eye detect, animal detect, and body detect. Face, body, animal work well. Eye detect, not so much. They said that's because of the contrast base system. They will address that in an update. Also, in terms of, let's say, low light performance of focusing, it can be tricky, but the AF light assist on this camera is so good. I could be in a pitch black room. That light will shoot a beam out. That camera will lock onto the subject and with the great ISO performance, I'm getting the shot, and it's not bad. The ISO performance is really, really good. Um, battery life, 
Could be better, I would say buy a secondary battery if you get this camera because you're gonna need it, especially if you're a professional photographer. I love that the shutter is so quiet. You almost don't need an electronic shutter if you're shooting weddings or in a very intimate setting because they do it so well, just internally in the camera. And the lenses from Panasonic are really good. So really, I would say my only qualms about the camera are just the autofocusing, and it's not really that bad. It's just that I would say if you want consistent, really good autofocusing, use single point or pinpoint. The rest zone and tracking work okay, but they are work in progress. Panasonic has assured me that those will be fixed in a future firmware update, but they were not gonna take away from your experience with this camera whatsoever. It really does take that good of photos. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Panasonic S1R. It's a formidable player and could be the full frame camera of the year for 2019. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. We love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Follow us on Facebook. Until the next one, take care.